So what should the label on a can of soda pop say? Well, on the can of soda pop, it should be just short of a skull and crossbones label, <laughs> whereas on the, on the healthy foods, it should be a nice green symbol saying, good healthy food. That should be on the front. Now, then on the back, you can include uh, certain clear nutrient uh, and other chemical contents for those who have real con uh, problems with regard to certain amounts of uh, chemicals and other components of foods. But the industry is saying that's like a warning. Why should there be a warning on the? Why products? shouldn't there be? If the food, if you're going to give Canadians a guidance with regard to what constitutes a good, healthy diet, remember our school systems no longer teach uh, dietitian, uh, dietetics or whatever uh, in, in schools. We don't do any of the things that contributed to young men and women learning something to how to go about their ordinary lives when they left school. And so they don't learn how to prepare uh, foods in most schools today. Uh, and you have to find a way to quickly get the information to people who are suddenly in a position to have to feed themselves and their families. And that information has to be very clear and very clearly indicated. Ha having a good healthy symbol right on the front of a good healthy food, what's wrong with that? And what about saying this product contains the eight and a half teaspoons of sugar? Well, it absolutely should. And there should be the label on the back showing how many sh uh, grams of sugar. And in, in many cases, they do. But it's divided into different categories of carbohydrate. So there will be one category of sugar, the kind of sugar you think of, which is glucose and, and sucrose, uh, fructose, those kinds of sugars. Largely, they're referring to sucrose, which is a combination of the two. And there's an amount for that. Then there's an amount for carbohydrates. There might even be another amount for starch, for example. In fact, we were told that on some food labels, there may be a seven different categories of carbohydrate. They're all sugar. Your committee stopped short of recommending a specific level for a sugar tax. Right. Why? Well, we, we think that, by the way, I want to interject and say, that our report contains an enormous range of recommendations with regard to uh, helping Canadians become healthy. There's some we like and, better. <laughs> and, 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 there's some, and there's some that you folks like a lot better than others, and the sugar tax seems to be uh, one of those. With regard to government's ability to tax items in this area, it has a range of taxation uh, opportunities available to it, all the way from uh, various import and other kinds of taxes through to uh, the various uh, taxes that the government had. The most direct tax that we're familiar with is sales tax at the end. And that's the tax increase that certain other countries have essentially put on. That, that tax that goes on top of everything else uh, on the price uh, of the item that, uh, that you've consumed. But a government could effectively increase the cost of sugar drinks by taxing many of the components directly going into that drink at the manufacturer level. And the industry says there's absolutely no evidence in any other jurisdiction that that has uh, s s any effect on obesity rates when governments tax these products. Well, first of all, it's way too early to draw that conclusion in any direction because it's only in the last two or three years that any countries have even thought about putting a tax specifically on sugar drinks. So the statement m means nothing because the trial is not done yet. To give a, a couple of examples, we had an example in one country, Denmark, where they brought a tax in on fatty foods. And it was a disaster. It was, it was a bureaucratic nightmare. And they withdrew their tax uh, levy even before they applied it to sugar pop drinks. Mexico has had a uh, tax directly on sugar drinks and some other issues as well. Various reports give some conflicting evidence with regard to the decreased consumption. Right at the moment, all you can do is uh, deal with this decreased consumption. The most important examples aren't normally quoted by the industry. One is Hungary, in which they put a very significant tax on sugar drinks, saw an almost equivalent percentage reduction in the consumption of sugar drinks and a rapid conversion by the industry 
into beverages that didn't contain sugar. So was there any positive impact in Mexico? I'm, I'm still not clear on that. The, I'm, I'm not going to make a, mm -hmm. a broad mm -hmm. comment mm -hmm. with regard to Mexico and how you measure mm -hmm. things and so on. I would say many of the reports are grossly inaccurate. Uh, there is uh, some evidence from official documents that the consumption of soda pops went down by the 10% increase. I would suggest to you that 10% is at the low end of what will have an impact in an area such as uh, uh, sugar pop uh, consumption, that the hung Hungarian model is much closer, has seen a substantial reduction. The translation of that into decreased obesity, uh, it would be ridiculous to expect to see a, 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 a turn overnight. It took us 30-some uh, years to get to where we are today. It's not going to turn over overnight. It looks like, by normal natural factors, that it's plateauing in terms of the total percentage of the population. But for any activity to have a significant impact on it, it's going to take a few years to, uh, to follow that and measure it. By activity, you mean regulation, labeling, all of this? In, in my opinion, uh, the, well, you were talking specifically about taxation on sugar drinks. It would take a few years to, uh, to determine that absolutely. But in changing the obesogenic environment that we've created, that's going to take time as well. And our report contains a number of recommendations as to how we think we've got to turn that around, to start turning that around, because we have to. And, and this is not an area where there is a miracle or quick fix solution. One of the things that a taxation on an evil product does, as we saw in the case of tobacco, is it raises the great alarm in society about the health impact. We believe a tax on soda pop will raise, is, is the best possible example to the public, there's something wrong here. There's something not valuable to us in this. There's something that could have a very negative impact on our health. Thank you.